Understanding Chemotherapy Your doctor has chosen to administer chemotherapy to you as an important part of your treatment. Chemotherapy is a group of drugs used to treat cancer. There are many chemotherapy drugs available for different kinds of cancer. Your therapy may include more than one drug and it may be given as an IV infusion, an injection, or in the form of a pill. Because people are treated with different drugs, some people may experience many side effects while others experience almost none. This teaching video will address the common side effects of chemotherapy. During your teaching session with your oncology nurse, you will hear about the possible side effects that your specific chemotherapy plan may cause. If you have any questions pertaining to the information provided in this video, please talk with your oncologist or your oncology nurse. Chemotherapy may affect your bone marrow. Your bone marrow makes white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. When you receive chemotherapy, it may affect all three of these kinds of cells. An important part of your treatment plan will be weekly lab draws to monitor your blood counts. White blood cells protect us from infection. Chemotherapy lowers the amount of white cells in your body. This is referred to as neutropenia. This makes you more susceptible to infection that normally your body would be able to fight off. Because of this, it is important to stay away from people who might have a cold, flu, or any other contagious illness. It's important for you to wash your hands frequently with soap and water or use hand sanitizer. Carrying hand sanitizer with you is a great idea when soap and water may not be convenient or accessible. If you should develop a fever over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, you should call your oncology nurse or doctor. If you should develop a sore throat, cough, pain or burning on urination, or any other signs of a possible infection, it is important to notify your doctor or nurse. Red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen to the cells in our body. Chemotherapy drugs may lower the amount of red blood cells in your circulation, causing anemia. This may cause many symptoms, the most significant being fatigue or tiredness. Some people may need to adjust work and or family responsibilities due to fatigue during their treatment. You may have times when increased activity may cause you shortness of breath. It may be difficult and frustrating to not be able to do what you are used to doing every day. This fatigue is a temporary side effect and after treatment your energy level will return. Short naps during the day may help, as well as planning activities when you feel the most energetic. Keeping hydrated and drinking plenty of non-caffeinated fluids will help you with your energy level, as will participating in daily moderate exercise such as walking. If you should have severe shortness of breath, feel faint or lightheaded, or have chest pain, please go to your nearest emergency room. Platelets help your blood to clot when you get a cut or bloody nose. Chemotherapy drugs can decrease the amount of platelets in your blood. Although you may not feel different if your platelets are low, you should be aware of some of the signs of low platelets. You may have increased bruising or small red dots on your skin called petechiae. You may notice some bleeding from your gums or nose. It may take longer to stop bleeding after you have your blood drawn. Check with your doctor before taking over-the-counter medications which can increase your risk for bleeding such as aspirin, Motrin, Advil, or Aleve. Using a soft toothbrush and an electric razor will decrease your risk for bleeding. While we encourage good mouth care, if you have not flossed your teeth on a regular basis before starting treatment, do not begin this practice at this time. If your platelet count is lower than normal, your oncology nurse or doctor will inform you. If you have bleeding which will not stop after 5 minutes, such as a bloody nose, cut, or injury, call your oncology doctor or nurse. Your healthcare team will check with you frequently to assess any of these side effects. Mouth sores or mucositis is an inflammation of the lining inside the mouth. This can occur on the tongue or anywhere in the mouth, such as the lip or the back of the throat. 
It may start as redness and irritation and progress to ulcers that are similar to cold sores. An infection inside the mouth called thrush may also develop. This is characterized by a thick coating on the tongue or white patches in the mouth. These may interfere with eating and drinking. At the first sign of discomfort in your mouth, make a rinse of warm water with one teaspoon each of salt and baking soda. Swish this rinse around your mouth every two hours while you're awake. Some other things that can help with mouth sores are keeping your lips and mouth moist, using a soft bristle toothbrush, and using a water pick instead of floss. Keep your dentures out if possible. Avoid mouthwash that contains alcohol, which is drying, and avoid citrus fruits. Notify your oncology nurse with any symptoms. Chemotherapy can cause nausea or vomiting. Nausea is when you feel like you're going to throw up, and vomiting is when you do throw up. Nausea and vomiting can occur while you are getting chemotherapy, right after treatment, or a few days after treatment. You will receive anti-nausea or anti-emetic medications prior to chemotherapy to prevent nausea from happening, and you will be prescribed medications to have at home in case you become nauseous. There are many different anti-nausea medications available. Take your anti-nausea medication exactly as prescribed by your nurse or doctor. If you try a medication and it doesn't work, tell your oncology nurse or doctor. They will prescribe a different medication to try. The best way to control nausea or vomiting is to prevent nausea. One way to do this is by eating small, frequent meals that do not upset the stomach. Try to stay away from foods with strong smells, such as fish, garlic, onions, or coffee. Plain crackers, broth, toast, or applesauce may be helpful options. Five to six small meals may be easier to digest than three large meals. Clear carbonated beverages that have lost their fizz can be a helpful choice as well. Sucking on ice chips, popsicles, fruit ice, sugar-free mint candies, or tart candies can be helpful. Try to take slow, deep breaths or get fresh air if you feel nauseous. Sometimes distracting yourself by talking to friends, listening to music, or watching TV can help as well. Diarrhea is defined as an increased volume or loose and or watery stools about three or more than your usual pattern. Some chemotherapy drugs can cause diarrhea. Your nurse will let you know if your treatment may cause diarrhea. If you experience diarrhea, increase your fluid intake over the suggested eight glasses a day. Take Imodium as instructed by your nurse. If severe diarrhea is left untreated, it could lead to dehydration, treatment delay, or hospitalization. It's important to keep track of how many times a day you have loose stools and the medications you are taking to control it so that your nurse can determine if the treatment is effective. Constipation is when your stool becomes very hard and dry and the usual pattern of your bowel movements has decreased. Constipation is a common problem for patients with cancer, occurring in 50 to 95 percent of patients. The most common causes are inadequate fluid intake and the use of pain medication. Like other side effects from chemotherapy, it's important to tell your nurse if you feel you are constipated or you have not moved your bowels in three days. Constipation can be managed by medication, but also by changes in your diet and fluid intake and increased activity. It's common to experience changes in taste during chemotherapy. Food and drink may taste differently than before chemotherapy, affecting your appetite and weight. Nutritional services are available to you through the Cancer Center should you wish to meet with a dietitian. It's important to stay hydrated and eat nutritious food in order to maintain your weight. Fatigue is the most common side effect of chemotherapy. It can be a physical, emotional, or cognitive tiredness that interferes with your usual functioning. It is one of the most distressing side effects of cancer and of chemotherapy. Your nurse will check with you to see if your fatigue is directly related to physical conditions such as anemia or may be related to medications, nutrition, or sleep disturbances. Some things you can do to help lessen your fatigue include alternating rest periods with activities. If permissible, newer research recommends regular periods of exercise. 
Walking, yoga, reiki, and massage are all types of complementary therapies that have been shown to improve fatigue. Fatigue is a major symptom related to the disease and the treatment, and everyone may experience different levels of fatigue. It's important to let your nurse know what your level of fatigue is so that it can be managed properly. Hair loss is also known as alopecia. It can happen anywhere on your body. This occurs because some chemotherapy drugs damage the cells that cause hair growth. Many people start to lose their hair two to three weeks after the start of chemotherapy. Some people lose their hair a little at a time, others lose it in clumps over a few days. You may find it helpful to have your hair cut short once it starts to fall out, but do not shave it off as it can cause additional irritation. Hair usually grows back two to three months after chemotherapy finishes. It will grow back very fine at first. The hair that grows back may look different than your hair before chemotherapy. It may be curly instead of straight or look lighter or darker than before. Before chemotherapy starts, talk to your doctor or nurse to find out if hair loss is likely to happen. Call your insurance company to find out if it will pay for a wig. If not, talk to your doctor, nurse, or oncology social worker who will help find a solution. It is best to choose your wig before chemotherapy starts. This way, the hairdresser will find it easier to match the color and style of your hair. During and after hair loss, be sure to protect your scalp. Protect your scalp by covering it with a hat, scarf, or turban. You may feel colder more often, and head coverings may be helpful to stay warm. Always apply sunscreen to your scalp and avoid very hot or very cold weather extremes. Avoid tanning beds. You may find it more comfortable to sleep on a satin pillowcase as there is less friction than cotton pillowcases. Make sure you talk about your feelings with a nurse, doctor, friend, or another person who has lost their hair due to cancer treatment if you feel angry, depressed, or embarrassed about your hair loss. Chemotherapy can cause damage to your nervous system. Oftentimes, these problems may resolve within a year of when you finish chemotherapy, but may be permanent. It is important to notify your nurse or doctor at the first signs of neuropathy so it may be addressed. Symptoms of neuropathy may include tingling, burning, weakness or numbness in your hands or feet, a pins and needles feeling, pain when walking, weak, sore, tired, or achy muscles, being clumsy or losing your balance, trouble picking up objects or buttoning your clothes, shaking or trembling, hearing loss, and confusion or memory loss. Remember to let your nurse know if you experience any of these symptoms. If you are of childbearing age, please talk to your doctor about fertility. It is important to address this prior to starting treatment. There are many factors that contribute to fertility problems, such as whether you have had problems before, the type of chemotherapy that you are receiving, and your age. Please do not attempt pregnancy during your treatment. Talk to your doctor once treatment is completed about when it is safe to consider pregnancy. Some types of chemotherapy can cause sexual changes. The changes can be different for men and women. Women may experience damage to the ovaries, which can cause hormonal changes. These hormonal changes can lead to vaginal dryness and early menopause. Men may experience hormonal changes, which could lead to impotence. There are many factors that contribute to these problems, such as whether you have had problems before, the type of chemotherapy that you are receiving, and age. Some problems, such as loss of interest in sex, may improve after chemotherapy. Sexual changes for women. Sexual side effects of chemotherapy include not being able to reach climax, being too tired for sex, and early menopause. Symptoms of menopause may include hot flashes, vaginal dryness, feeling irritable, irregular or no menstrual periods, bladder or vaginal infections, vaginal discharge, and loss of interest in sex. Talk with your doctor or nurse and ask if it's okay to have sex. Talk to your doctor about vaginal creams for dryness. Help prevent vaginal dryness and infection by wearing cotton underwear, avoiding tight pants, and using a water-based vaginal lubricant. 
regardless of your childbearing potential, please have your partner wear a condom during sexual relations to avoid infection and exposing your partner to chemotherapy. You also need to talk to your doctor about birth control if you're a woman of reproductive age. Chemotherapy is very harmful to the fetus in the first three months. Sexual changes for men. Sexual side effects of chemotherapy include not being able to reach climax, not being able to get or keep an erection, and being too tired for sex. Talk with your doctor or nurse about your concerns and ask if it's okay to have sex. Also be sure to talk to your doctor about birth control. Regardless of your childbearing potential, please wear a condom during sexual relations to avoid infection and exposing your partner to chemotherapy. Changes in emotions for you, your family, and friends are completely normal. You may all experience a range of emotions during diagnosis and treatment. Your nurse can refer you to social services should you need or want to speak with someone at any point during your treatment. The Cancer Center also offers support groups. We hope this has answered some questions regarding the possible side effects of chemotherapy. You will be scheduled for an additional chemotherapy education session with a nurse from the medical infusion room. At that time, your specific chemotherapy side effects will be discussed as well as your treatment schedule. Please use these phone numbers if you have any further questions or concerns. At the Cancer Center, we realize this is a very difficult time. We are here to support you during your treatment. Please let us know if you have any questions or concerns that we may help you with. We want you to know that you are not alone.